Hey there, Mike Robinson with Mike Gambrel here at Blackhawk Paramotor. And today we're going to show people a little trick. If they uh, don't have a priming unit on their carburetor, we'll show you how to build one. And uh, from now on, ours will come out with the uh, priming button on them as well. Right now we're using a little uh, zip tie and it works well, but this will make it even easier for you. So Mike, what do we got going here? Well, it's a simple process. You take the metering plate off this side of your carburetor. So it's just four screws to remove it. Carefully remove this plate. There is a diaphragm behind there. There's the diaphragm, so you can just set that off to the side. Now you should just have the metering plate. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to go ahead and drill another hole in here so that we have ambient the outside air pressure for the metering diaphragm to work properly in case the rivet hole gets clogged up for any reason. So you can drill this like an eighth inch works fine and it doesn't really matter where you put it at. Always use good bits. You notice I'm using a diaper and uh, it keeps it from getting scratched. And I'm going very slow. You don't want the bit to grab and twist or bend this plate in any way, shape, or form. Make sure that none of this dust, the metal, metal material is anywhere around here. If you have some burrs or something, you can clean them up with a file or use a Dremel. I've got my Dremel right here, so what I'll do is just go ahead and clean that up real quick. The tools you need is a Phillips screwdriver and an 8 inch drill bit, and if you have a Dremel, that's great. There. It's nice and cleaned up, ready to go. So next step is you're just going to take your rivet. This is an eighth inch diameter. The grip length on it is five eighths of an inch. We'll go through the center. So it needs to be on the inside, the rivet coming out to the outside. So it'll look just like that. Next thing you're going to need to do is a spring. And this spring is approximately three quarters of an inch long. You'll go ahead and place that over the rivet. And then we'll use a small washer that's got an eighth inch ID hole in it, and that will go over the rivet. So we can pull that all down, and it looks like that. You can get the rivet washers along with the rivets at any Ace Hardware or Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. It's yeah. a washer, it's made specifically for a, a rivet. And by the way, the rivet's aluminum, the washer is aluminum as well. So we want to hold the rivet with a pair of pliers. The reason for doing that is because if we don't hold it with a pair of pliers, when we go to pull the rivet through, it'll end up deforming the whole thing and then it's just not going to work properly. So we're only interested in pulling this through enough to where it mushrooms out the rivet so that it keeps the spring and the washer in place. Just a standard rivet tool is all you need. Be careful and make sure that you hold the rivet tool straight. That's really a key and you, I'm barely gonna okay, go at all. right there. And that should hold it in place. That looks great, Mike. Yep. So now we just need to pop the nail out, which is real simple. You can just take and put it on any surface like that, push it through. So that's coming out. And that just pulls straight out like that and there you have it. Um, nice clean. You'll want to look, there's a lot of different tolerance issues between these carburetors and so you see the thickness of the <clears throat> of the rivet head here. You want to make sure that when you put this back on that that is not actually contacting the diaphragm itself. 
in the past when we've had these and with the tolerance issue changes, which is the reason I like a zip tie, um, that will open it up enough. You'll know immediately if it's contacting because you're going to flood the engine when you try to start it. So what you can do is you can get in here with a Dremel once more and you can shave that down to where you can have it either paper thin, which isn't that great, or uh, you know just enough to where it doesn't make contact with the metering diaphragm. This is a very sensitive, I mean the spring under here and everything you can watch go to my carburetor video. You'll see that this is all a very finite thing. So we just want to make sure that this is not going to be contacting here and actually opening up the metering arm. It's best to actually just go ahead and grind this down and then you won't have any issue. As Mike was mentioning, there's been some deformities in the Walbro carburetors in the last couple years and some would contact and some wouldn't. Yeah. The rivet height there is the rivet height, but yeah. some hit, some do not. So go ahead and take it down a little bit. I like the sandpaper version of the Dremel tool, but this will work just fine. Basically all you have to do, make sure that all the particles are gone, there's no rough edges or anything, and make sure that the button works good. It's yep. perfect. Then just put it back on. Install the four screws. You don't need to put monstrous torque on these. You just snug them down. They are a small screw. And remember to just bottom out each one and then go around and tighten them. This is a very easy operation. It's very functional. And it's something that you can do yourself on your paramotor. Obviously, we took the carburetor off. You don't have to do that. All you need to do is take the cover plate off. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, you know who to call. And uh, if you have any suggestions for more videos, please comment and let us know. There you have it. Yeah. All done. A little close up here, you can see the hole that we drilled. That, as Mike mentioned, balances the atmospheric pressure from inside the carburetor with that that we're breathing right now. It's a very important component. That's it. All good. All done. From Blackhawk Paramotor to you, another little tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for yeah. watching. Have a good one.